This sucks. It's gonna be a horrible month. <sighs> oh, hi, Mac. What's up, Fachero fam? This is about to be a very interesting video. I'm gonna see how much muscle I can build in the next 30 days. Here are my current dimensions. I'm not gonna lie, I already started off my morning with a mass gainer. So I have a bit of like a mass gainer belly, so to speak. But here's how we look right now on day one as this challenge begins. I wanna stress, right in the beginning of this video, I did a lot of research. So I'm gonna be focusing mainly on the science behind the food I'm eating, supplementation, of course the workouts, my entire lifestyle and everything. But I also want to stress, I'm not a personal trainer, I'm not a doctor. I have no idea what to expect for this video and what's going to happen on these next 30 days. It is definitely going to be an interesting 30 days and video to say the least. But enough small talk, let's get right in to the first workout. All right, first workout done. Got like a little pump going. Uh, okay, all I'm gonna say is this is gonna be a long month. In case you wanna see like the exact workouts I'm doing, I do have them listed below in the description if you wanna read them. I will talk about them a bit later in this video in terms of the like exact specifics, but you can read kind of the workouts that I've put together based off all the research I've done. But yeah, this is gonna be, way harder than I expected. This is this is a horrible idea. Not gonna lie, I'm already exhausted. The hardest part of this entire 30 days by far is actually not gonna be the workouts, it's gonna be the food. I'm eating an insane amount of food and supplements and everything, pretty much from the time I wake up until the time I go to bed. But talking about the workouts, here is the month of January. I'm working out from January 2nd to January 31st, so 30 days, and I'm calling this month Jacked January. I know, a bit cheesy, but I do like the alliteration. And as you can see, all the X's, I'm only working out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's it. So technically, for the next 30 days, I'm only working out 13 times. And in addition, each workout is roughly about an hour. Again, throughout this video at different points, I'll be going more in depth about each individual part and kind of strategy that I'm using. For the first few days, so I'm kind of giving you the overarching picture. Wow, that was a horrible workout. <sighs> Only day three of the month, we have a lot longer to go. The funniest part about getting done with my workout isn't being super tired or super sweaty. I mean, I'm pretty much drenched, but it's the fact that in the same parking lot, in and out. Not gonna lie, and probably not surprising, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sore, but I'm sore in a different way. You know, most of my subscribers know I'm huge into parkour and calisthenics. So most of my workouts typically are like bodyweight based, doing acrobatics and whatnot. This is really my first time ever primarily focusing on just lifting weights. As you can imagine, lifting weights is the best way to build muscle. So I'm sore, but in like a unique way. It's hard to describe. It's almost like a, a dull soreness as opposed to when I do bodyweight workouts, it's almost like a sharp uh, soreness. I don't know if that makes any sense. But in the morning, every morning, this is what I'm doing, you know, is starting off with this mass gainer. I've grown to hate this stuff already. It is five scoops and it's roughly about 800 calories to wake up with. Thank you. 
One big aspect of this entire challenge among a lot of things is alcohol. Now I decided I'm not gonna do a full on dry January. I am gonna drink, but mainly with four restrictions. One is I can only drink on Friday and Saturday nights. I typically don't really drink during the week anyway, but even still, I might as well make it as like a hard rule. The second thing, no binge drinking. As you can imagine, if you drink a lot, it's gonna heavily affect muscle protein synthesis and gains for lack of a better word. The most amount of drinks I can have on a given night is two, nothing more past that. The third thing is no beer. As you can imagine, beer out of any alcohol is like arguably the worst for you. So the only alcohols I'm actually gonna have either red wine or 100% agave tequila or mezcal, basically like a solidly good tequila or mezcal. I'm not gonna lie, I've been going through like a big mezcal phase recently. And then the fourth rule is no mixers besides like club soda. So I can't have a tequila sunrise, for example, because yeah, maybe I'm having a good or decent tequila that's 100% agave, but if I'm mixing it with like a ton of orange juice and grenadine and a bunch of sugar and whatnot and soda, not the best for me. Working on some new music, here's how it sounds. South by Southwest. Just woke up, had my mask gainer, went for a nice walk. This is what I'm looking right now after one week. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like not bad. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I've been liking, I don't sound like men's warehouse, but I like the way I look right now. I feel like even after a week, I feel like I am noticing some results. I will say the bloating's definitely gone down compared to before when I had the mask scanner. I was like, so I'm like I was like out to here almost when I had to have the uh, mask scanner for the first few days. Now I feel like my body's kind of slimmed down a bit and it's used to all the food. I feel like I've gained some muscle. I'm also not a good flexor. That's something I gotta get better at, like with all the weird poses and I don't know, all that stuff. <laughs> Getting there, that was a brutal workout. Let's talk about each workout specifically. I wanted to wait a little bit later in this video to do this. The reason why is I felt like if I did this right in the beginning of the video, it'd be too overwhelming talking about each workout, each supplement, each lifestyle design I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera. So I kind of want to space it out a bit. This is my workout notebook. It was on sale at the store. I thought it was a, uh, funny kind of looking notebook and I'm like you know what looks kind of girly a little bit it's kind of funny and goofy might as well get that and it came with this hot pink pen and the best part is when I went to start like writing notes I noticed it writes an actual pink <laughs> I just think it's so ridiculous because it's kind of like the irony that I'm doing this whole kind of like manly slash masculine challenge of like seeing how much muscle I can build and meanwhile and I'm not exaggerating in the gym I actually have this out in the open, writing in, you know, hot pink, as you can see, taking notes of my reps, sets, weight, etc. So here is the workout, starting off with Monday. Monday is really full body. Almost every workout is full body, to be honest, but especially Monday, in my opinion, hits the most muscle groups. That way, and I learned this from Andrew Huberman, he works out legs on Monday. And the reason why is he says, because it's, you know, a huge muscle group, of course, it releases a lot more like muscle building, hormones and kind of stuff in your body that prepares your body for the rest of the week, so to speak. So I decided to really kind of front load my workout on Monday, hitting full body. So what I do is I do pull-ups, then push-ups, and then deadlifts, and then repeat that 10 times in a row. In addition, throughout this entire month, I'm really not focusing on cardio. Because I'm mainly focusing on bulking, I find, again, it affects everybody differently. If I go, like say for a run, on a Tuesday or Thursday or on a Saturday, I actually find that I lose some slight muscle mass. Maybe it's because I'm not eating enough or whatever. It's tough to say, but in the past, I noticed that doing more cardio did affect my the visual perception of my muscle mass, so to speak. Every Monday, what I try to do in terms of doing progressive overload, progressive overload meaning I have to do either more sets, more reps, more weight, etc. Every Monday, I have to do more pull-ups than the Monday before it. 
same thing with push-ups, and same thing with deadlifts. Lastly, I finish off with FTS7. This is a brutal kind of like sprint to the finish. I do this in every workout. I pick one move, and what you do is you set a timer on your phone or your stopwatch, and you start it. What I personally do is I start it at second 45. I then do that next 15 seconds, so second 45 to a minute, and I do all out. So for Monday's workout, I do dumbbell presses. So I take two dumbbells, and I press them for 15 seconds, max reps, as many as I can do in 15 seconds. Then I wait 45 seconds, do that again for 15 seconds. And I do that seven times in a row, hence the FTS seven. This is a huge technique I've learned in terms of bodybuilding and whatnot. That's kind of like the big kind of muscle pump to give you that huge pump at the end. It's like the perfect way, in my opinion, to finish off a workout because it is kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, it is just brutal. Now going on to Wednesday. And Wednesday, I find out of any of these workouts is probably the most technical and the most weight heavy. Again, though, I'm not a, you know, a licensed doctor or anything. A lot of this is me just kind of winging it, seeing where it goes, having fun with these workouts. So now going on to Wednesday, I primarily focus on shoulders, biceps, and triceps with some legs. So Wednesday consists of five rounds. Each round contains two sets. So I start each round with a set of kettlebell swings. Huge fan of using the kettlebells. So what I do is I start off each round with three exercises. I do a shoulder exercise, a bicep exercise, and then a tricep exercise, and I repeat that two times in a row. So I do each exercise twice. So once, then do it again, then I go to round two, and round two is a set of other moves. So the good thing about this workout is as opposed to Monday or Friday, what you notice, Monday and Friday I pick a certain collection of moves and I just repeat them over and over. With Wednesday, I pick just a handful of moves and I try to do my best with them for two sets. Then I pick a whole set of new moves, I try to do my best with them for two sets, so on and so forth. And then lastly, on Friday, so it's 10 sets. I start each two sets, if that makes sense, with uh, air squats. So just air squats, no weight in my hand or anything. Every single set of two, I start with that, similar to what I do on Wednesday. So the first kind of set, so to speak, is I do Y pull-ups, static arm curls, so biceps, and then tricep pull-downs. So the bicep and the tricep move never changes. I do 10 sets of curls, so one set of curls for each set, one set of tricep pull-downs for each set. However, the first five sets, I primarily do wide pull-ups. And then the last five sets, I only start with wide push-ups. And then lastly, in terms of the FTS seven, right? The, again, the, the sprint to the finish, so to speak, I then just do two rows. So as opposed to actually like, using weight or whatever, I actually like to use the machine for this last one. Now there are a couple of things I am doing for each workout, uh, I will say. One is I finish each workout with FTS seven. Like I said, that's very important. The second thing, I am working out legs every workout. That's also very important. Third thing, as I said, I'm working out only Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I really want my body to take as much time it needs to rest. And between those days, so like Tuesday, Thursday, and then Saturday and Sunday when I'm not working out, I'm not doing anything active. I've even thought about what if I went for a hike, but whatever. But even stuff like that, I don't wanna put my body in the position where it feels like it has to exert more energy to accomplish a given task. Another thing I will say, again, like I mentioned before, progressive overload to so each workout. So I only have workout one, two, and three, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Each time I repeat each workout, I have to do either more weight or more reps for that given set. And lastly, and this is a big one, is rest. So between each set, or even if I'm in the set, I can take as much time as I want. So there's no kind of, besides the FTS-7 at the end, there isn't really any specific timeline for how I wanna work out. For every one of these workouts, I say it doesn't matter how much time it takes. If let's say I wanna take five minutes between push-ups and deadlifts on a Monday, I can do that. If let's say I wanna take five minutes between sets, I can do that. Here's how I'm looking now. I just woke up, I slept till like one o'clock today. Um, so my body definitely needed like the rest. I've never taken more videos and photos of my body. So kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie to uh, be doing this throughout the challenge, but I guess that's the point of this video, trying to see like how much muscle I can put on, having fun with this. I've showed like a lot of my upper body recently, but I think my legs starting to look pretty good too. I work out my legs a lot anyway though. Leg day is one of my favorite days because of all the parkour training I do, but 
Definitely building a lot more muscle in my legs in terms of my quads, calves. Let's go. I picked the perfect time to do this experiment because right now there's a massive egg shortage, at least at the time of this video. And yeah, I'm getting eggs from Trader Joe's and I have four a day, by the way. However, you can only buy one carton of eggs every time you go. So I've literally gone to Trader Joe's every like two or three days because I go through a carton of eggs in three days. So yeah, one slight change I am gonna make. I have been making some changes throughout this entire challenge just based off what I feel like might work best. Today is typically pull-ups, push-ups, deadlifts, then finish off with FTS-7 with uh, dumbbell presses. I might switch it up where I might do pull-ups, dumbbell presses, and then deadlifts, and then finish it off in terms of FTS-7 with push-ups. I've noticed and probably not surprising that when it comes to just building muscle mass, not just getting a, like a good pump, but really building muscle mass, lifting a lot of weight has been definitely a game changer and has definitely gotten me way more muscle and noticeably too than just doing push-ups or bodyweight exercises. Halfway through, I gotta say, switching up the push-ups and dumbbell presses makes this a lot harder. So yeah, definitely a lot harder. Um, workout seven done, six left to go for this challenge. This is the secret to uh, building muscle playing some Pokemon. I will say it's getting a bit harder to film in the gym. You know, it is a commercial gym. So in the beginning, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna get like a bunch of shots of me working out and everything. But at this point, you're kind of used to the workouts. I've already gotten over them, but feeling good. You know, definitely uh, definitely building more muscle, as, as you can see. Um, surprisingly, not putting on too much fat. There might be some fat I've been building, but considering how much food I'm eating, and how much protein I'm having and everything, not too bad. Now it's time to talk about supplements, what I'm eating, and my overall lifestyle. Like I said, there are two parts on this video where I'm gonna go pretty in depth. One is the workouts, of course. The second is the lifestyle. The first thing, when I wake up, I immediately have this mass gainer. I already mentioned this on the video. I'm going to hate it, I'm not gonna lie, but this has, like I said, 830 calories, 63 grams of protein, 132 carbs, and a lot more when it comes to it. So I pair that with some coffee. I always have my coffee black. I find it just a lot healthier. I will say I typically do intermittent fasting, but for this challenge, I need to have all the time I need to really build muscle and everything. Then I usually get some work done. I might film some other videos. I might work on music, and then, it's time for the workout. And I will say, there are a lot of different things I take before I work out. And I wanna stress, very importantly, I am not a doctor. I almost didn't wanna talk about the supplements I'm taking on this video, but I wanna stress, I am not a doctor. This is not meant to be medical advice or anything. Here's what I'm taking, and I'm gonna give you kind of like a quick one sentence explanation as to what it does and why. First, I have a tablespoon of honey. This is a simple carb. So basically, it's something my body absorbs right away to give it some fuel for the workout. Then I have some oats as a complex carb. As you can imagine, trying to get as many nutrients as you can before your workout's important. So then I have some oats. And then lastly, I have some almond butter. This is kind of like a mini subtle meal or snack before I begin my pre-workout supplements. It's just oats, honey, and almond butter. This is just healthy fats with some protein. First things first, I have some dextrose. I take this both before and after my workout, so I'll talk about that in a little bit, but your body absorbs this pretty quick and you can use it for fuel right away. Next is Tongue Cat Ali. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I heard about this from Andrew Huberman. It's really good for like a mild stimulant effect I find and helps me hit the gym harder and pump longer. Next, I have creatine monohydrate, pretty much the staple of working out. You can work out harder, longer, good for endurance, whatever kind of you're doing for a fitness activity. It's also been shown to be good for mental health as well. Then I take creatine hydrochloride, another type of creatine. I'm not gonna lie, the science is a bit more fuzzy on hydrochloride than monohydrate. 
but I do find I can work out harder when I take it. It could very well be placebo effect. Next, I take L-citrulline for a nitric oxide booster to allow me to work out for longer and harder. Then I take HMB powder or hydroxymethylbutyrate. This is good to help your body recover. Next, I take a pre-workout supplement, and this may be confusing to some people that pre-workout supplements and a pre-workout supplement sometimes can be like the same thing. So this is one that you take before you work out as it sounds among all these. And I will say as a side note, some of these supplements I do take are not necessarily pre-workout supplements. I just take them before I work out just cause they're good for you and everything. But this basically has like caffeine and other things just kind of pump you up and get you ready. Next, I have Moringa powder. You can probably take this any time of the day. This is like a superfood, not really related to working out. But I find when I take it before I work out, I find just more nutrients in my body to kind of push it harder. And Moringa powder is unbelievably good for you. Next, I have super greens. This is a bunch of like vegetables, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients kind of ground up into a powder. So just put one scoop in, pretty easy. And I wanna stress as well, when it comes to these supplements, especially for the super greens, these are not meant to be a replacement for vegetables. Just because I take this doesn't mean I don't have to have spinach or kale or chard or all these vegetables. You should have this in addition to your normal diet. Of course, it does help kind of fill in the gaps, like say if there's a day where you miss something or whatever, but I wanna stress for all these supplements, I think too many people look at them as a replacement. Like, oh, I have this, I don't have to have my salad today. No, you should have your salad and this. Next is Joint Vibrance. I love this product. I might also say to you, I have no affiliation with any of these, right? I bought all of these with my own money. This is a great product that, as you can imagine, hence the name's good for your joints. What I like about this product, similar to the Super Greens, is there's a bunch of vitamins and minerals that are really good, as it sounds for, like joint health. So we have collagen, like hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, MSM, et cetera, et cetera. Then I have powdered peanut butter. This stuff is awesome. I love it because peanut butter, even like the almond butter that I showed you, it's annoying just putting like a tablespoon in and it gets everywhere and it's super like slimy, if that's the right word. This, as it sounds, is peanut butter, but powdered, so really good before a workout. Then I have bone broth powder. This is protein and collagen. Again, I think just really good to have as much nutrients as possible before I work out. And last, but definitely not least, for my pre-workout supplements, I have whey protein. As you can imagine, having protein, just super good in general. And I like to have whey before I work out because your body absorbs whey pretty quickly. Now on to the post-workout supplements. These are the ones that I have right after I work out. And there's only a couple of them. You may notice I take a lot before I work out to really like get ready, but then not as much after because then I want to switch to regular food and start eating a lot of food. Remember, most of your nutrients, if not all of them, should really come from actual food. I just take these supplements to kind of fill in the gaps and help me out where I can. So I first have turmeric, as you can probably see in my hand when I was talking. Turmeric is just really good for you, especially for reducing inflammation. Next, I have dextrose again. So I have this both before I work out and after, and this is something my body can absorb and use super quick. And then last, for my post-workout supplements, I have Huel. I lived off this stuff for an entire month. I already did a video about that on my channel. This is the Huel Black Edition. There are a couple different types of Huel. In very simple terms, this is basically powdered food. So one serving has 400 calories and 40 grams of protein. So it's a great source of protein among a lot of other macro and micronutrients. Then after taking my post-workout supplements, I'll then come home, shower and change, and then I'll take my vitamins. Starting it off, I take this for my liver. I know when I mention a liver supplement or liver detox, immediately people think of alcohol, which obviously is important, but your liver is just super good for you for just detoxification for everything, not just alcohol. Then I have zinc. Zinc is super good for you for numerous different reasons, but especially for this challenge, it helps build muscle. Then I have a multivitamin. I mean, pretty straightforward, it's a multivitamin. Then I have vitamin D3 and K2. I feel like vitamin D, especially because of Dr. Anna Patrick, has gotten a lot of attention, especially in the past five or 10 years, and for good reason. Vitamin D is unbelievably good for you. However, when you're taking a lot of vitamin D, you also wanna take a lot of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is unbelievably good for you and not a lot of people have it in their diet. And so what you might see now is a lot of supplements have D3 plus K2. There's a synergistic blend, meaning when you take both D3 and K2 together, it's a lot better overall. Then I take Avmacol, which is a sulforaphane supplement. Sulforaphane has been shown to be unbelievably good for you, especially for a lot of mental health as well. This is something I take all the time. I'm a huge fan of it. And it's very good, like I said, for both mental health and of course, physical health. And then the last supplement I take during the day is fish oil. There are 
So many benefits to fish oil. I mean, there's a ton of them. Even again, talking about Dr. Andrew Patrick in a podcast, she was saying how vitamin D and fish oil are some of the biggest supplements she does suggest to a lot of people. At this point now, I have real food. In case you're curious like where I get most of my protein from in terms of like actual food and meals and everything, one, eggs. I have, I'd say about four eggs a day. Then Greek yogurt. I actually have Greek yogurt traditionally at night because it has casein protein, which we'll talk about in a second. But I have about too many packets of Greek yogurt. I also have a ton of greens. I am obsessed with like spinach, kale, chard, watercress. Those are some of my favorite greens. In addition to all these supplements and food I'm having, I also make sure to drink a ton of water. The first challenge I ever did on this channel actually, maybe my OG subscribers from years ago will remember, this is in 2015 I think, is I drank a gallon of water a day for 40 days and it genuinely, I'm not exaggerating, changed my life. Even if you're not into fitness or health or anything, it's crazy how just that one simple thing of just having more water throughout the day made such a profound impact on how I felt. I could work out harder. In addition, mentally, like I was producing music better and I felt like I was more mentally focused and everything. It's crazy how much that helped. And then right before I go to bed, I have two main supplements. The first is casein protein. I mentioned this before because Greek yogurt has a lot of casein. In case you didn't know, different proteins have different speeds of absorption. So to make things super simple, whey protein, for example, which I already showed you, is absorbed pretty quickly. That's why I have it right before I work out. Casein protein takes a while for your body to absorb. So when you have this right before you go to bed, as you can imagine, the biggest issue for a lot of bodybuilders, for example, is sleeping, right? Because while you're sleeping, you're not getting any nutrients. So with casein protein, your body's still slowly absorbing that protein even while you're sleeping. And then the last supplement I have right before I go to bed is magnesium. Most people are magnesium deficient, meaning they don't get enough magnesium in their diet. There's a bunch of different types of magnesium. I personally take natural calm. And then the final, most important supplement slash nutrition slash lifestyle thing of them all, sleep. By far, sleep is without question the most important element of this entire experiment, even if I'm not doing a building muscle experiment, when it comes to me making music, filming videos, regardless of what you do, sleep is so unbelievably important. And in case you're curious for this particular experiment, I'm sleeping about nine to sometimes even 10 hours a night. All right, I just woke up and I actually did just wake up. But yeah, I'm pretty dead because what's interesting is uh, I'm getting used to like this lifestyle, so to speak, like I'm gonna have my mass gainer in a second. Uh, I slept 10 hours last night and everything. So I'm used to kind of like eating all this food and working out and everything. But the crazy thing is, is obviously each workout gets harder. So in some ways this challenge has gotten, I don't say easier, but I'm getting used to it. But in other ways, this challenge has gotten more difficult. Calves are looking good. Oh yeah. dying the most out of any workout yet and not in a good way oh well, i know it's not good but so so very bittersweet on one end in a good way i just moved to a new place i'm right by sunset here in los angeles which is awesome hence why i'm outside right now at a starbucks getting some work done on the other end though unfortunately i have to end the challenge yesterday when doing the deadlifts i hurt myself i pushed myself way too hard tried to like muscle it out and everything after the adrenaline really wore off uh the bottom left side of my abs or almost like my upper groin region started hurting a lot like even just sitting it was pulsating it was, it was in pretty pretty bad pain and i was in a lot of pain even when i'm not doing anything today it's a little bit better but even just moving around it hurts i called one of my friends who's a nurse told him about it and he basically said to me look i gotta be honest it's either a you just pulled something, but really, really bad, 
or B, it could be a minor, minor hernia. And obviously it was tough for him to say exactly what it was because I just called him. But his overall advice was look and the challenge. He goes, whether it is something that you severely pulled or it's a minor hernia, it is really tough to say, but he goes either way and the challenge because even though this is something minor per se, like it's gonna go away with rest, it could turn into something major. And I'm pretty pissed off about this. I thought a lot about it. Do I want to end the challenge or not? Cause I've been pushing myself so hard, but I was like, you know what? Especially because I have three workouts left and those workouts are going to be the hardest and I'm really going to be going all out. I even tried doing some movements. Like I tried doing a handstand push up, and that spot was killing. And I was like, you know, I think I got to do the smart thing, which is end the challenge now. So ironically, this video isn't really how much muscle can I build in 30 days. This video is really how much muscle can I build in 23 days. But for right now, I'm gonna rest. Take it easy, just take it easy tonight because I had to move as well today and everything. Not the best given how I'm feeling, but take it easy tonight. And then tomorrow I'm gonna reveal how much muscle I built in 23 days. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Boom, here's the before and after picture of me seeing how much muscle I could build in only 23 days. Because remember, unfortunately, I had to end this challenge early. In addition, per the numbers, my starting weight was 178 pounds even, and I had 126.9 pounds of muscle mass. And at the end of this challenge, on day 23, I weighed 181.9 pounds, and I had 131.5 pounds of muscle mass, which means I gained 4.6 pounds of muscle mass in the past 23 days. Now talking about the final analysis of this entire experiment, I gotta say, although I'm very frustrated that I had to end it at day 23 and not do it for the full 30 days, I'm honestly pretty pumped about the results. I really did not know what to expect going into this. I did a tremendous amount of preparation on the food I should eat, the supplements, you know, the uh, the workouts. I do wanna stress, there is a tremendous amount that I edited out in this video and in this experiment, just to kind of show you the main highlights of this whole thing, because I didn't want this video to be hours long, but I'm not exaggerating when I say that this challenge took up literally 24 hours of my day. I was making sure I was sleeping as much as possible, eating from the time I woke up, right until I went to bed, tracking everything, it was just, it was so much, and when I went into it, my initial kind of rough idea or kind of goal was to gain between four and five pounds of muscle in 30 days. I thought that would be a pretty good goal, something that I think wasn't completely outrageous, but something that wasn't completely easy as well. And the fact that I gained roughly about four and a half pounds of muscle in just 23 days, if I kept going the full 30 days, I think my body would start to taper off a bit, if I had to be honest. And if I continued on for another week, who knows, maybe I would have gained another, you know, maybe even pound of muscle and finished off around five and a half pounds. Really tough to say, but you know, overall, I just gotta be honest that I've never pushed myself this hard, not even remotely close. Like I, I can't even exaggerate how brutally horrible this challenge was. And I gotta say, I respect bodybuilders so much more now because I hated every moment of this challenge. I went into it thinking, oh, this is gonna be fun. I'm just gonna eat a ton of food, work out super hard, let's just see how much muscle I can build. It was just miserable. I just gotta be blunt. It was not fun whatsoever. I, I hated this challenge, but I'm really glad I did it. Now, I do like to be very transparent in all my videos, and I wanna talk about some unique points, especially for like my fitness people out there, like my intense fitness uh, athletes and whatnot, that remember, this is not meant to be a scientific or a hard scientific experiment. I was tracking my muscle mass using a $30 scale I got on Amazon. It's not like I got a DEXA scan or an MRI or anything. I was really just having fun with this to see. The second thing I do wanna mention, which I think is very important to mention, is the before and after pictures. Because I had a lot of people when I posted the after picture online on social media say, oh Mark, wow, this is crazy that you look so much bigger and everything. And well, yes, I did bulk up throughout this challenge. One thing I do have to mention, and again, I like to be very transparent, is with that after photo, one, it was immediately after the workout. In case you don't know, after you work out, your muscles are pretty much gonna be looking the biggest they're gonna look for a while, so to speak. That's why every gym dude and every gym dudette, if that's the right word, dudette, 
Every gym, basically girl and guy, they always like to take a selfie or picture in the mirror. The reason why is they know that their pump that they're having is where their muscles are gonna look the biggest. So I do wanna stress that on that photo, one, I had a pump. Second, better lighting. As you can imagine, lighting can be the make or break between you looking a lot bigger or not as big. And the third thing, which is a big one that I did talk about a little bit throughout this video is angles and technique. Technique. As you can imagine, after taking a lot of photos, after taking a lot of cliche, shirtless selfie photos in the mirror, I got better at how to flex to make my muscles look bigger, what angle I should have when taking the photo, what angle I should kind of turn my arm into so that way I have the best shot and so I can look the biggest in that particular photo. And I do wanna talk about that because that's a big thing you see on Instagram a lot from both guys and girls, like guys like say taking these huge flexing muscle pics. Remember, they don't look like that all the time. All these girls taking these like butt selfies or belfies is the turn now. All these pictures of their butt and everything. Remember, a lot of it and even a lot of models that I've talked to admit, it's angles. You get that pump, you get the right lighting, the right angle to make your butt look the biggest. But I have one unique theory as to why I gained a good amount of muscle mass in this challenge. And that is the paradox of being experienced while also being inexperienced. Now, first off, in December, leading up to this challenge, I didn't work out that much. I wasn't eating the best, being honest. I mean, it was the holidays. I was drinking, I was partying. Again, not eating the best. And I was doing some research when it comes to this challenge. And one great resource was the four hour body by Tim Ferriss. And he talked about the Colorado experiment where someone tried to figure out how much muscle could they put on in only one month. That experiment was actually one of the breadcrumbs that led me to do this entire challenge. As I was like, huh, what if I do the same thing, but I'm not an experienced bodybuilder or, you know, body hacker or whatever. I'm just kind of a regular Joe Schmo. And one thing they talked about is if you're trying to do an experiment like this, leading up to it, not working out helps because the more you work out, the harder it is to put on more and more muscle. A bodybuilder putting on a pound of muscle has to work out significantly harder and do more than like say someone who's never worked out or a novice or a beginner. And continuing along with the fact that I didn't work out that much in December, I think my body, and I might even say my mind, so to speak, was in this sweet spot going into this challenge where compared to the average person, I'd like to say that I'm pretty knowledgeable and more experienced when it comes to fitness, athletics, supplementation, food, nutrition, and a lot more. So I have a lot of the knowledge and the fact that most of my workouts are body weight, which I'll talk about in a second. I'd say I had a good amount of experience going into this of knowing exactly what to do. Remember, I didn't have a trainer for this. I didn't have like a coach. I just did this all on my own. On the other end, which I think actually really helped me out the most, I was very inexperienced, or I'd say my body was inexperienced when it comes to weightlifting. My body is mainly used to just doing, you know, a lot of bodyweight exercises, flips, acrobatics, a lot of like parkour and calisthenics. So as a result, I think I have this perfect sweet spot that if you do a lot of research for a novice beginner, like I mentioned, for a novice, for a beginner, for someone just getting into weightlifting, you could put on pounds of muscle way easier than a bodybuilder. So I think my body kind of was in almost a novice beginner type mode. Again, this is just a theory. Don't quote me on this. This is not meant to be a hard scientific experiment, but I think my body, because it was not used to weightlifting pretty much at all, except a couple times here and there, when I immediately just went into it, my body was like, whoa, we're not used to this. So I started putting on a lot of muscle and because I had all this prior experience and knowledge of what to do, not only of course did I tackle the gym aggressively. I mean, these workouts were the hardest workouts I've done in years, maybe of my entire life. These workouts were brutal and miserable. I know what it's like now to sit in your car and almost have anxiety to go into the gym because you know the workout is gonna be that miserable. I never had that before. And every workout, I would just sit in my car and just be like, all right, okay. And so the fact that I was pushing myself so hard in the gym, right? And the fact that my body wasn't as experienced when it comes to weightlifting really, I think helped propel my gains faster. And then when you combine that with the experience and knowledge that I have in terms of exactly what to eat, how much I was eating, I mean, again, I was probably having, especially as this workout was progressing, I was eating more and more. I was eating sometimes around 300 grams of protein a day, drinking a gallon to two gallons of water a day, eating so much food on top of all these supplements that I was having that I showed you as well earlier in this video. I was sleeping 10, 11, sometimes even 12 hours a night. I completely 
cleared my schedule for this. I cannot tell you how frustrated I was to end this challenge early. But again, when talking to my friend who's a nurse and hearing what he had to say, there's a massive difference between, you know, pushing yourself and kind of pushing through the pain when you have to because you want to get to that next level and pushing yourself when the pain is indicating you're hurting yourself in a way that might cause severe complications later on. And I think given the fact of how the deadlifts went on Monday, because I really went too hard on that and my form started to slack, but I was like, oh, I'll just power through. We'll just, you know, do whatever. I will say that right now I still feel pretty horrible. Like I've not felt good this entire uh, experiment. So I will say that. I bet a lot of people might be watching this being like, oh, you were eating super healthy. You were working out super hard. You weren't drinking really any alcohol besides a couple drinks here and there. I bet you feel great. No. But anyway, that was quite the experience. And now that it's finally over, I'm gonna lie down and relax. Thanks for watching.